Imagine that you are talking to an FBI agent. Dude is interrogating you, asking all kinds of questions all up in your business. Think about how defensive you would get. Don't talk to me like that. Well, think about what you're saying to your prospects when you get these inbound leads. Sometimes it may feel worse than an interrogation. We're just drilling them down for all of this information. How can we make those conversations better? My friend David is going to share three things today that he would teach to his business development reps or his SDRs so that they could have success. So if he's teaching it to them, shoot, you better listen to what he has to say. Probably could help you too. make good money. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist podcast here on TSC TV on YouTube. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode today, we're going to be talking to our good friend, Mr. David Goings. And David's going to talk to us about how he would help his SDRs or BDRs have more meaningful conversations. How to make sure that we don't sound like robots when we're doing this interview and that we're not interrogating people, that we're having a conversation and helping our inbound leads feel like we actually want to help them. You're going to hear about his new role. He just recently got this role back in February, I believe, and he is killing it as a leader in his team. So I, I want you to go ahead and connect with my good friend David on LinkedIn as well and send him a congratulatory message on his new position, as well as to listen for these three things and see how you can apply them. David, thank you so much for joining me on this episode, man. I'm super excited to chat with you. Donald, I'm excited to be here, man. Um, this is a great topic for us, and I love the podcast. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. And you guys hear that, you know, David Goins gave us a good recommendation. So if you're listening, because uh, more stuff's coming. <laughs> so, uh, David, before we dive into this, tell us a little bit more about you, man, and what you do right now. Yeah, definitely. I work at a company called Logicate. We're a governance, risk, and compliance mm -hmm. platform. We developed the most configurable, effective, and easy to use GRC tool on the market. And really what we do is we operationalize regulatory risk and compliance programs. So for a lot of people that are your listeners, they probably have no idea what I just said. So for those unfamiliar with GRC like, technology, say again. I was like, what language was that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, it's funny because I didn't know what it was either until I started here. But for those unfamiliar... It, I liken it to a CRM tool, uh, a CRM tool gotcha. your sales team uh, may use to organize themselves, your customer success team, your marketing team. So we take that same approach for your information security team, your compliance team, and your risk team. Um, so Boom. right now where I'm at, I'm a, I'm a SMB sales manager here. I just got started in, on February 1st, my first individual contributor management role, which I'm really excited about. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Um, before that I sold here for the, for the past two years as a top individual contributor. Before that, I worked at a company called Velocity EHS, where I was a top rep for about three and a half years. Well, that's like, well, I mean, first off, congratulations. And for those who are listening to this episode, if you're on Apple podcasts, Google, what I want you to do, scroll down to the credit. I mean, to the show notes right now, click on David's LinkedIn connection and send him a congratulations. I mean, this is pretty amazing where someone was you know, killing it as a rep and now you have the opportunity to be able to lead a team. And, and uh, I'm, I know they picked the right person to be able to do that. So give him a big shout out, guys. Appreciate that, man. Thank um, you. Well, David, I, this is gonna be fun then for us. One of the things you mentioned from the very jump at the beginning of the episode here, uh, you said that um, you and you said this is gonna be a good topic. And as a podcaster, I listen for the things that's between the lines and a salesperson. So I want to hear why, why do you feel that this is going to be a good topic or a good discussion? It sounds like there's a, there's a reason or a passion down there somewhere. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what I try to instill in my team is what is sales at, at, our, at our goal, at our, at our core rather, what is sales? It, it's to bring a positive impact to our customers' lives. Right. And, you know, generally you're doing that through your products and your services that you're offering. But also sometimes it's just in the experience that you have with the customer. Maybe they don't buy from you, but they sure gained a lot of you know, insight into their industry or, or their role just through that conversation. And I think I love, yeah. you know, I love this topic the most um, because 
the inbound conversation versus the outbound conversation inherently forces you to like have a different strategic approach to it. Um, and with mm -hmm. the idea that if we want to bring a positive impact to our customers, then we need to strategize and think about inbound conversations differently. Um, and so if we do that, then it's more likely that you know, we can have a better impact to that customer, uh, solve their challenges in a different way, and ultimately establish a lifelong relationship with the customer. So go back to that piece where you said, like, the, you know, uh, this is more of it's 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 different with that inbound versus outbound. What's the difference when you have this conversation between an inbound versus an outbound uh, opportunity? I think for from an inbound perspective, you really need to consider where in the buying process or just the problem solving process the customer may be at. Generally, with an inbound conversation, the prospect may have already identified that problem internally. They've had conversations about it with their teammates, with their leader, with their senior executives they've started to hash out what are the solutions to this problem. And it could be software, it could be training, it could be a consultant coming in, but they maybe have already decided, okay, now we want, to, we, we want software to solve this problem. And so you know, mm -hmm. then they're taking the next step, what core components do I want in this software? And then let me go do some research and find out what companies do that. And a lot of times that is where an inbound conversation begins. So they've already done a ton of work before they started talking to you. Whereas in an outbound conversation, you may have just piqued someone's interest, but they're still identifying what the problem is for the first time. So considering all the work that's been done up until that point is gonna change the way you strategize and prepare for that first conversation. Okay, so let's go break that down. I'm, your new, I'm, uh, I'm a BDR, you just hired me like a month ago and I'm on your team and I'm just like, David is like gonna kill it and I'm excited to be here with him and be a part of this family. You're, we get a lot of inbound leads coming in uh, because people are searching for that wonderful term that you said that I can't remember now, <laughs> that CRM. And uh, let's say that we're searching for that term, we're getting these amazing leads. What are some things that you're gonna coach me on to make sure I don't sound like an FBI agent interrogating somebody when I'm meeting with, uh, with these prospects? What are some of those, maybe like top three things that you would tell me and then let's break those down? Yeah, definitely. So first of all, it's GRC, um, if you wanna look that up later. <laughs> um, but uh, top three- We got it down in the show notes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, send your information security team to us. Um, <laughs> top three things, number one is gonna be mindset. Number two is going to be expectation setting. And the number three is um, bringing a perspective. So that's where I would coach kind of the, the top three things that you need to be considering as you're going into this first conversation. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's break each of those down. Let's, let's go with mindset. What do you, what do you want to tell me about mindset that I may not necessarily understand um, as a sales rep that can help me make sure I have these meaningful conversations? Definitely. So, the one thing that, that I want to point out is you also described um, not sounding like you're interrogating the prospect. There are so many court companies out there that are having kind of that, this BDR situation and they're giving them that list of questions because they know that this is what's going to make them successful. Um, and so naturally, if, a cust if someone is going to read off that list of questions, they're not coming with that natural curiosity. And that's going to be felt okay. by the customer, which inherently changes the entire relationship you have with them. And so from a mindset perspective, you need to come in and understand that your job is to help the other person. It's not really to make a sale. That's the hopeful outcome. But you have to come in and say, I want to have a conversation with this person in order to help them. And so with that perspective, you naturally have to say, OK, well, I can't pitch my product and solutions from a moral perspective until I understand what this person on the other line is going through, what their current situation is, what their goals are. And so if I have that mindset of, I want to positively impact this person, then I have to understand those things. And so if you come into your conversation with that mindset, you're naturally going to come off as, as a helpful person, as a consultative person. So I think that's probably mm -hmm. number one thing. And so let's come dive back into that there for a second. What I like about it is the fact that you're 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 setting me up as the seller to understand that it's 
we kind of talked about this at the beginning of the episode. If we can have a natural conversation with like two friends chatting, then that makes it a little bit more exciting. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes as BDR, we're so afraid of losing the opportunity. When I was an inside sales rep and, you know, doing BDR work, I was afraid of like, this is precious, man, freaking, I'm calling all these people or I get these leads and, you know, I, I don't want to be the one that's dropping a ball and have my rates look, my, you know, conversion rates look low. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to be able to have some, I want to be the person that's like generating stuff. So, I'm thinking each of them are precious, which they are, and then therefore that causes me to you know, to start doing silly things that I typically probably wouldn't do on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if I'm making sense with that. No, absolutely. I think, you know, it's so natural to kind of fall into that, you know, I need to hit my numbers and I need to do X, Y, Z. But the, th the way I look at it is it sells karma. I need to do the right mm -hmm. things for the right, for the customer in order for them to be successful. If I do focus all my energy on that, then I myself will be successful. Um, you know, regardless of if, if I hit, you know, if this is a, if I qualify this or not based on this conversation, if there's a problem that I know yeah. I can help with, that's qualified, that's going to be a good opportunity for me and the organization. Yeah. Good. So I got my mindset right. I'm focusing on the prospect. I'm focusing on solving a problem. I'm focusing on, you know, that stuff. What else could I do or that you would coach me on? What's that second thing? Um, it was expectation setting was number two. And I think this right. is so powerful for any or, or anyone who's running a business meeting. And actually, it's it all starts from kind of the human psychology of wanting to know what's next. Um, the yeah. human brain is so conditioned to be worried about like, oh, well, what's going to happen next? Um, and am I going to get the, to the things that I really want to get to? Right. And um, so for any kind of business setting, especially for these first conversations, you want to kind of ease the mind of the, of the customer or the prospect uh, and kind of let them know yeah. what's going to happen in this conversation. So generally in an inbound conversation, like we mentioned, they've already done quite a bit of work. And, yeah. you know, sometimes they're done talking about all the problems that they have today. They've been talking about it internally for weeks, right? Um, and so yeah. naturally, if you come in and start asking questions about like, well, what, is, what does your process look like today? What, what problems do you have there? They're like, oh my gosh, Donald, <laughs> can you just tell me what you guys do? Like, can you just tell me? So, um, you know, from that perspective, you, I generally will start a meeting and say like, well, first I want to learn about like what's happening today, what led you to us and overall what your goals are. And then afterwards, mm. I'm going to share where we potentially could fit in. And by the end of this meeting, we'll both understand, you know, if there's a mutual fit and we can set up a next step, which is most likely going to be a demonstration. But if it's not, I'll let you know. And then we can part our separate ways. We could still be friends. I can even point you in the right direction for a technology <laughs> that's better suited for me. Right. And so right. naturally you're calming it down then. Yeah. It, it, I love everything about that. And it goes back to this, like, go back to what you said, the human psychology from the very top of it. It's like now if, if, if somebody says this to me and you're able to, you know, to guide in that way, it's like, all right, I have the ability to jump out if this doesn't work. Or I know mm -hmm. a dude is not trying to just sell, you know, sell me a bag of goods because or, you know, this, this girl is trying to sell me a bag of goods because of the fact that I'm a prospect looking. And again, just cut the crap give me what I need. And you're coming to the point where you're seeking first to help them understand or seeking first to understand then to be understood. Because if I recognize that you care that much, that you're understanding where I'm coming from, that I did the research and I'm, you know, have this and you know, all these things already, I'm just trying to figure out the right stuff. Then it's like, okay, good. You, it will be great to do business with you. It'll be great to work with you. A hundred percent. And I think one last thing on top okay. of that is, this idea, there was a study by Ellen Langer, who's a psychologist, and she studied the, um, the term, like the reason for like what I'm asking for is. Mm -hmm. And she did, she did a study where it was, um, she would ask to cut in line for a Xerox machine. You know, people that used to make copies, physical copies. I, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. That was after my, or before my time, but you know, I can <laughs> kind of conceptually understand what it is. Um, but the idea was she was going to go and ask someone to cut in line um, mm -hmm. to make copies. And she took three different approaches. The first was she came in and asked, hey, I'd like to cut you in line. Um, I need to make five copies. The second approach was, hey, can I cut you in line? I need to make copies and I'm really in a rush. The third approach yeah. was, hey, I need to make some copies. Um, I need to cut you in line because I need to make some copies. That one doesn't really make sense, right? 
So yeah. the success rate for cutting people in line with the first option, it was 60%. But for the second and the third option, it was 94 and 93%, um, you know, lining up with, with those two uh, approaches. And so what it showed was that if the person that you're speaking to understands the reason for what you're asking, it's more likely that they're going to um, give you kind of what you need. People inherently want to help others. And so in your introduction, when you're setting the expectations, when you say, hey, I want to ask you some questions about what you're currently doing and what your goals are, the, the reason that I'm asking that is so that I can properly curate the next demonstration, the next meeting, the next proposal around the things that matter most to you. Boom. Boom. I love how you did that. Because one, you got my mindset going. Two, you set the expectation to the prospect. And then three, when you're doing things like this and doing that, it's like going back to the whole expectation concept. You know, like it is it is firmly because you gave me the agenda and then now it is to justify the agenda, right? Mm -hmm. In order for me to get you this, here's why. Bro, I love that. <laughs> people, people lean into that. Then it's like, okay, well, shoot, if I want to get what I want, well, I better, you know, open open my heart up or else like I'm there's a chance that I run that I don't get the solution that I need that I've already talked internally with my entire team about what that solution may look like. So I better lay it all out here right now. And so that's the thought well, process that we want, right? From the customer. I, oh, that is it's all it's money. It is on point. I love this. So I am a one got my mindset right. I'm helping this person Two, I'm coming in this meeting and I'm having expectations. And also I'm getting the agenda and kind of helping them to set realistic expectation. Anything else on the expectation front that I should be aware of before we go to the third principle? No, I don't think so. Oh, dude, you got me. So everybody's on the edge of their seat right now. So what is that? Give us that next third piece. Now um, that third principle that you would teach me, let's break that down. Yeah, definitely. So I said originally, um, bringing a perspective, um, yeah. and I almost want to do like a three A onto this, um, but you know, well, we can do three A, man. Give them a <laughs> bonus one. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. I think um, you know, bring, bringing a perspective. The one thing that I think any young professional has a really hard time with is feeling like they belong in the room, right? If you're calling on you know an industry that you're not familiar with. I'm governance, risk, compliance, GRC. Donald, I know you already forgot. Um, I remember GRC. But, uh, I remember, bro. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> um, you know, when I step into this new role, I, I don't really know, you know, what I'm talking about. Right. And um, I think a lot of people feel like that. They're not a marketing mm -hmm. expert. They're not, you know, um, you know, an HRM or an H HCM expert. And so the, that confidence can kind of wane. But the thing is that I always tell my reps is you may not be an expert in you know, all things governance versus compliance, but you are an expert in buying technology. You are an expert in our mm. current customers and our current customers' stories on how we've impacted them. And so, you know, one thing that we always try to do in these first kind of inbound calls is like open the customer up. And sometimes the customer doesn't want to be opened up. And an easy way to get them to do that is to share you know, a, cust a customer story and an impact that we've brought, you know, to a previous customer, you know, that can be really simply done with like, Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Prospect, you mentioned that you have things happening in, in Excel spreadsheets and emails today. I worked with another customer just like that, who was in that same situation. And what we did was implemented logic gate or whatever tool that you use. And the impact that that, that had on them was X, Y, Z. The benefit that we have as we have our own customers. Let's go and talk to them. We, we have something on our team called Guest Speaker Fridays. And the benefit for me is I, I was an individual, individual contributor. I have my own customers. So every Friday, I bring on one of my customers to talk to my team with how they've implemented and what impact that's had on them. And now my reps, though they are brand new sales professionals, they can go into these inbound conversations and retell those stories to help the customer open up a little bit. So that is kind of bringing, bringing up perspective and, and in a way that is natural and actually helps the prospect kind of think through the work that they've already been doing. Bro, absolutely love that. Um, 
just thinking about it, like uh, the go back, let's break down that concept even more. So that that feature Friday idea, like, I mean, is, is it like you record something with them and you have it or are you just doing like a live, almost like a, a, a webinar type thing? Yeah, it's guest speaker Friday, um, dubbed guest SMB Friday. guest speaker Friday. And here's here's a little plug. We are uh, SMB, but mighty. Um, that's our, kind of our, <laughs> our motto uh, because we are the first SMB team here at Logic Gate. But um, it's really just a fireside chat. And what I tell my customers, you know, is we want to break down two different things. One is mm. the sales process, buying process for them. How do they like to go about it? What things do they consider? How do they prioritize? Like, how did, wh- how did we win your business? Did anything in the sales process, you know, make you feel like that we were a better fit? Uh, spoilers, mm. there are things that we can do as sales professionals and the way that we execute in the sales process can be the differentiator for us sometimes. It's not always products and features. Sometimes it's just the way you work. And so that's what we break down in one section. The other is more about customer Im- uh, impact. You've implemented Logic Gate. What's your life like right now? How is life different? Let's break that down. And so we do that in a very small group setting. You know, uh, just my team, which is only four people right now, and then myself. And we and we do that so that it can be like very conversational and we can ask questions on the fly. And customers love doing that. They love being able yeah. to talk about their story and them feel like that they're participating in our success because we are a mutual partnership. We want to see each other be successful. Bro, this is money in the bank. So let me let me hear this out now. Do you invite any prospects to those things or do you get that? to prospect or is it mo- mainly right now you're just your internal team that's getting the, the benefit here? Yeah. So just, uh, just our team. And then we're interviewing just yeah. customers right now, but that is a really good idea. That's Bro, almost that's like what a, I wrote down. That's like a reference call. <laughs> that's a reference call, but it's like, Hey, just join us. See, like they don't have to participate. Just, yeah. just come listen to the conversation. Yeah, it could be like a next point too, even in that sales process, depending on how lengthy your sales process is, right? But you can prep these clients and then have them jump in and say, you know, hey, you know, here's some questions. This is what we're going to ask you. And, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes. And then you tell the prospects, like, if you want to hear from a real life customer, every Friday we talk with a customer um, and you can hear their story. You can see the backlogs here. But here's the, re- you know, if you're, if, if that's a longer sales process and you don't want to extend it if you don't need to, but if it is, then why as well just go ahead and give them? Because I know my BDR, the reason I wrote it down, we have for one of our processes a little bit longer, one of the programs. Mm-hmm. So this is like, and I'm already used to doing it from this side. I'm like, freaking man, let's go ahead and, and yeah. uh, you know, tweak that a little bit. So you gave me something there, boy. I'm about to test this out. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so impactful. It really is. And you know, you got to give them some swag afterwards. You got to, you got to give the big thank you, but, um, this is money, money, money. Your, your reps are learning, you know, you're learning, your prospect may be learning. The customer feels appreciated. Like everybody wins in this scenario. Oh, bro. Money in a bank. All right. What's the bonus one? You got Was that the C? Oh, oh, right. I think, uh, the bonus one is more about just asking those, those layered layered questions you may have it's okay if you have a set list of questions that you're asking as long as you're coming in with the right mindset the customer understands the expectation of why you're asking but normally the customer's not giving you everything sometimes people will show up and throw up all over you um but sometimes you have to like peel peel the onion back um yeah and so there's a couple really good ways to do that and you know one that we use internally is called uh, TED, and it's an acronym. It stands for tell me, mm-hmm. explain to me, describe to me. And so if there's any you know scenario where you're asking the customer kind of what's going on today or what their goals are, you can use the next sentence could be like, tell me more about how that would impact you. Explain to me a time where that really became a big issue. Describe to me what that goal would bring to the rest of the business. And so it's a very right. natural right. approach to just like, yeah, like let me learn a little bit more about this. And like the other it. thing, I like it. The other thing to really go into that this idea of, but we talk about in sales customer stories, how impactful customer stories are, right? There, there's probably a million podcasts about it, and there's webinars, and it's like you need to tell customer stories. It's true, stories 
are impactful. You know what? Just as impactful, have the customer tell you a story. Hey, tell me a time, yeah. like, tell me about a time when that problem really became an issue for you or, or the executive team or what have you. Well, what was that like? Right. Have the customer yeah. tell you a story. It's going to naturally give you more information about the situation. It's going to line you up for a more impactful and specific you know, proposal, demonstration, et cetera. Um, and so that's really where the mindset comes from. Stories are powerful, but it's not just us. Let's have the customer tell us, tell us some stories. Bro, I'm loving this. All right. I'm applying. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm now your new BDR. <laughs> Come join us. Come um, join us. We're hiring mid-market <laughs> AEs right now. Actually, I, I have a couple of folks that may, I'm going to recommend then. Um, I do have some folks who've asked recently if I know of any good companies. And you guys clearly passed the test, so I'm going to send the name over. Appreciate um, it. In an email. Of course, man. Well, listen here, man, I, I appreciate all of this. If there's one major piece of advice, one major takeaway you want somebody listening to this episode to walk away with, what's that advice? My advice is to really unpack and understand what is your why behind you as a sales mm -hmm. professional? I think if you can get behind your why, you know, for me, as I describe it, it's positively impacting the customer, whether it's through my products and services or the interactions they have with me. If they're learning from me, but they choose someone else, I know that sales karma is going to come back to me. So it's all about yeah. impacting them positively, my reps positively, the rest of my business positively. That's what drives me and make, helps me get through those like bad, bad months, bad quarters, uh, and allows me not to hit that roller coaster of sales. So figure out what your why is. Um, there's a lot of good books out there about that. Um, the Noble Purpose of Selling by me, Lisa McLeod is a great book that I recommend for anybody to wow. learn to find their why. So good, man. We're going to put that in our show notes so folks can get access to it. David, if folks want to get access to you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Definitely. LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash in slash David Goings. That's my number one. I, I like to stay active on there. I, I write in there that I'm a self-proclaimed sales nerd. Um, I'm always <laughs> writing out in my description, like what I'm listening to. I'm a huge podcast fan what I'm reading. So let's stay connected and, and always happy to just pass notes on like better ways to, to work in sales because I'm always on a, on a growth, on a growth journey. So um, probably best way for me. Love it, man. Well, David also um, the, thank you. So, well, thank you for coming on the show, man. We appreciate that. Great to be here. I, I appreciate it. I'm excited to potentially join you again someday. That was Mr. David Goings. And if you want to go ahead and connect with David, you can find all of his information simply on LinkedIn. We have some information down below. You can find it there, you can find it there as well. But I, I, I'm sharing you the stuff because I want you to go here. Check out this guy's LinkedIn, man. It's, he's just awesome. He's a cool dude. As you can see, he is a nice person. He's active on here. So you can find him. Scroll down below if you're watching this on TSC TV on YouTube. You'll see the link. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, go down to the show notes or Stitcher and you'll go ahead and click on that LinkedIn link and connect with him. Tell him you heard him on the Sales Evangelist Podcast and tell him you want to be his friend and congratulate him on his new position. As always, we share stuff like this because we want to help you. We have guests that come on our podcast. We have these hosts that we bring on, like myself. I am the only host that I bring on, so why am I saying that? But anyways, we're going to keep this in the episode so you can show that I'm human and I mess up as well. But these uh, partners that we bring on, these sponsors, these partners, they share and give uh, amazing offers, and I want you to check out the offers that they're giving away right now, these deals, and take advantage of them and see how it can benefit you and your team. As always, I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to be able to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.